Hey guys, Zal here. Today I want to talk with you about organic chemistry. The name of that class strikes fear in the hearts of many a fledgling chemistry and pre-med major, and it's a notoriously difficult class, but it doesn't have to be. With the help of some tips and some things I've learned, I hope I can impart some of my wisdom on organic chemistry to you guys to help the class be a lot easier than it sounds. I've been through all of my intro organic chemistry classes and I've taken advanced ones up to organic synthesis, so I've learned quite a few things about how to succeed in organic chemistry along the way, and hopefully I can make the class and your experience with organic chemistry a lot less painful and a lot more fulfilling. With that, let's hop right into it. Now some preliminary things before you even take your first organic chemistry class is when you are signing up for your class, look up the professors on rate my professor, and maybe even talk to people in that department to see which professors are good. Organic chemistry is already a really hard class and there's some topics in it that are really hard to understand, so you don't want to be stuck in this class especially with a brick of a professor. So be sure to try and get some reviews on professors before you sign up for your organic chem class. A good professor can make or break this class. Now the number one trick and the number one thing I see people mess up when they're taking organic chemistry and a lot of other chemistry classes is getting behind. But in organic chemistry specifically, every single thing you learn in the class is a building block for the next topic, which means if you're not doing well or you get behind on a certain topic, you can't just skip ahead to the next topic because you're going to need to know the information from the last topic. So whatever you do, don't get behind. Always try and stay ahead with your work and your topics in organic chemistry. Everything builds on each other and you're going to need to know everything before you move on to the next topic. This class is so easy to snowball in getting behind in work, so you actually need to actively try your hardest to stay on time and stay ahead. If you don't understand something, be sure to get help before it's too late. You want to get help when that topic is being taught and not afterwards because you're going to have twice as much material to catch up on. My second trick is to learn the mechanisms of every reaction you're learning about. So many people will learn the reagents that are used and what they do to a certain functional group, but they'll never learn how it affects that functional group and the actual mechanism of action to like convert that functional group to something else. Learning the mechanisms is a lot more work, it's a lot more memorization, but it'll give you a much better fundamental understanding of the chemistry going on. So when you're taking an exam and you see a reagent or a molecule that you haven't seen before, but you know it's similar to another reaction, you'll be able to run through the mechanism that you already know to try and predict what's going to happen to that molecule. This is huge in organic chemistry, and understanding mechanisms of action can also help you with some of the trickier organic chemistry problems that professors will sometimes throw on tests for kind of flips on material that you haven't seen. This lets you apply that mechanism to a new issue. I actually had a professor, chemistry professor once, and referred to these problems that kind of try and trick you as the problems that separate the boys from the men. So you always got to be prepared for those types of problems on an organic chem test. So knowing the mechanism helps this like exponentially. Third, you can't be afraid to look at resources that are outside the scope of the class. Sometimes a professor professor's style or the way they format their lectures just doesn't jive with your learning style, and it can be make it incredibly difficult to learn organic chemistry. Don't be afraid to go look through the textbook to see if it explains it better, or to even go to a different textbook than is given in the class that maybe you can get from the library or a friend and see if that helps explain the information better. If that doesn't work, or even in supplement to that, you can go on YouTube and check out channels like the Organic Chemistry Tutor. There's so many different channels that can explain all these topics in a completely different way than your professor does, and sometimes having someone just explain it in a different way can help you just click. There's a lot of stuff in organic chemistry where it just kind of needs to click in your head before you truly get it, and having it explained in different ways can truly help that. 
You can also look to peers and see if your peers can explain it in a different way. Or if you have tutoring that's relatively cheap or free, you can go to that and check out your school's tutoring center. Just use all the resources you can to help you explain a certain topic if you don't understand it. I had these books, Organic Chemistry as a Second Language for second semester and first semester, recommended to me my freshman year before I took organic chemistry and these were actually books that weren't the ones that were for my organic chemistry class but they're my favorite organic chemistry books for taking your first and second semester organic chemistry. They cut out a lot of fluff from the bigger organic chemistry textbooks and they just give you the reactions and the stuff you really need to know. It really cuts down to the meat and bones of organic chemistry and they're super helpful to have a straightforward explanation of a lot of reactions and a lot of mechanisms. They're also filled with practice problems that I would always run through before my exams and it was super helpful. So I highly recommend checking these out. David Klein, Organic Chemistry as a Second Language. Fourth, get a good modeling kit. So many of the kits they recommend are either terrible or people just don't get them and it's a lot harder to imagine things like when you get into the topics of chirality in that 3D way. Even if you're really good at your spatial reasoning, it can be a lot easier to just have your stuff in your model kit to try and visualize a certain mechanism or a certain molecule structure. Getting a 3D modeling kit is a super useful tool and if you're going to be taking your first and second semester organic chemistry or even beyond, I highly recommend investing in a good modeling kit. They can also be just kind of fun to mess around with, so look into good modeling kits, especially for people who have a bit more trouble doing the 3D imagery and spatial reasoning in their head. I have this kit. I got it off Amazon. It's really great. It comes with these large plastic, very easy to see molecules. I like these a lot better than some of the smaller, worse kits. They're just very easy to see and you can get your double and triple bonds in them really easily with the flexi bonds. Really good kit. I recommend it. There are also kits like these with these smaller, uh, plastic non-flexi bond molecules, I don't recommend those. It's a lot harder to visualize where your stuff is in your structure and it's a lot harder to do things like double bonds and all. I'd invest in one of those big plastic kits that I showed you. They're a lot better and super helpful when you're going into chirality. Now fifth, keep things neat and have a lot of blank paper on hand and you're gonna underestimate how much paper you need but you're gonna use a lot of paper. When you keep things neat, it lets you lay out each of your molecules, especially when you're doing like longer step reactions and mechanisms, and see what changes in between each one. So many points have been taken off through the decades for chemistry students who don't keep things neat and they'll lose track of a small functional group or a certain hydrogen or something. So just keep things neat in line in all your mechanisms and your syntheses. Having each molecule step by step is super helpful. It's going to take a lot longer, it's going to be slower and kind of painstaking, but doing it will pay off in the long run. And also just run through as many practice problems as you can. Seeing more molecules and seeing more reactions will help build your chemical intuition, which is kind of just your innate understanding of how reactions and how properties of certain molecules will work. If I showed a certain like, molecule to a lower level or an OCHEM 1 student, they probably couldn't tell me much about it, but once you get to a higher level chem student, I could show them molecule and they'll be able to give me a good estimate of a lot of the properties of the molecule from its solubility in certain compounds to its acidity and so much more. Doing all these practice problems and just looking at all these structures will help build your chemical intuition and that is so important as a chemistry major and it'll make your life so much easier when you just have this database backed up in your mind and you can basically use instincts to solve problems. I hope this video is helpful for any of you planning to take OCHEM. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and if you want another video like this I can maybe do a part two of you know, tips and tricks for getting through these chem classes, just be sure to comment it and like down below. So I'll see you guys next time.